Now, Belafil is FDA approved for soft tissue filling of the nasolabial folds with smile lines and acne scars using a fine needle where it's been shown to last through five years. Now, as often is the case, doctors then use the FDA approved product in ways that are different than the initial FDA study and then it's called off-label use. This video will help you get a better understanding of how this product can be used to safely restore the facial volume while preventing or minimizing bruising, pain, swelling, and obtain the best results possible with this facial filler. Now the product contains calcollagen. So patients should have a skin test on their forearm to rule out the very rare patient with allergy to calcollagen, as otherwise you might see months of itchy red swelling where you inject it on the face. If you happen to be that rare allergic patient it's usually an obvious large red itchy swelling of the injection site on your forearm for less than a week. Now the procedure starts with determining how many syringes will be needed for optimal correction and then you decide how many syringes they want to inject at any given time. Since the fees for injection are often around $800 per syringe, most of my patients want to try just one to two syringes at a time as that is what their budget allows. Now the lower lids can typically use one syringe per side temples, if they're a little hollow, can use one syringe per side. Cheeks, if they're f flattened or drooping from aging, can you typically use two syringes on the left, which tend to age a little more, and then one on the right. The nasolabial folds, those, those smile lines everyone hates, can typically use one syringe per fold. The jawline can often use one syringe. And some have hollows even below the cheeks that can use one syringe per side. Thus, patients in their 40s usually need one box of five syringes, 50s need two boxes, and 60s need three boxes. Now remember that each box only contains four cc's, or just a little more than three quarter of a teaspoon of product. So when you look at a patient, you can first say it looks like you've lost about one or two teaspoons, or maybe a tablespoon of volume. Then you explain how this corresponds to one, two, or three boxes of Belafil. And you let them know that it's packaged in small syringes that are enough for just one small area at a time. But since my patients are on a budget, they do choose to focus on these one or two small areas at a time. Thus, you need to decide which area to start on, as typically it takes one to two syringes just to correct any given area on the face. Most patients want their nasolabial folds, their smile lines, filled in. We always mention that if we were to lift the cheeks and temples three-dimensionally with Belafil, then the fold gets flatter and you don't have to put that much in the fold itself because if you put too much in the fold, it starts looking more like a chipmunk. The problem is that lifting often requires three to four syringes of filler, so most patients choose to fill the fold in directly first. The fold typically requires one syringe per side to see nice improvement. Now many patients start with half a syringe per side and return after three months for the other half syringe per side. The cow collagen often disappears at the same rate at the human collagen replaces it so the correction many times just continues to improve. Unfortunately, in many patients the cow collagen practically disappears in three to six weeks and it takes two to three months to get the human collagen to grow and fill it back in so patients often believe the initial correction quickly fades. Fortunately, it generally returns at three months. Another small area that patients often request is the tear troughs, or those hollows by the nose under the eyes, or even just the lower lid hollows. Now it's best never to put in more than 0.3 cc's per tear drop, which means basically a third of a syringe, at any given time, even when more is needed. The skin is thin, and the product tends to be heavy for the first three months when it's stimulating growth of new collagen. It's essentially like a mild inflammatory reaction that attracts just a little extra fluid for three months. So if you're correcting the entire lower lid hollows and upper cheeks, then you can use up to one syringe per side. But I prefer to correct it by less than 50% and using half a syringe per side and put the other syringe in in three months or later. This way you never get a lot of fluid collection in the lower lids. I explain it with an analogy. If you know it's going to take two or three coats of paint to cover the wall, you never put on all three coats at once. You let it dry between coats so it comes out smooth and beautiful in the end. Since the product attracts little water for three months, I say it takes three months to dry. Therefore, it's of utmost importance that you do the injections in a way 
that they don't hurt, don't bruise, and don't swell for more than a day, or most patients won't return for their second and third coats. That's why I use lidocaine for numbing and epinephrine in blunt cannulas to prevent bruising. And in the lower lids, you, can also, you also cannot rub against the undersurface of the dermis, or you get immediate swelling and delayed bruising. Thus, first I mark the areas I ag have agreed to inject with the patient, and usually I plan to put in a little more on the left, as most patients have aged more on the left from driving a car and the extra decades of daily sun damage have accumulated more on the left face. I use a Sharpie as it's easy to remove with peroxide. Next, the injection sites are marked as circles as I don't want to put a needle through the ink and tattoo the patient. Then I prep with Hippocleans to prevent biofilms. These are bacterial injections, basically. And then I cool the skin with the Zimmer cooler, which decreases bleeding and discomfort. Then I inject in the superficial skin, an intradermal bleb, a small amount of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine, which is buffered with bicarb to take away the sting, and the finest needle wherever I plan on inserting the blunt cannula. Then I allow time for the skin to turn white. Then I like to make an opening this size that will readily allow the blunt cannula to enter from all angles without ever bending that cannula or having it, ha you don't want to have to stick the needle in repeatedly either, that's more traumatic. Since the openings always heal in a day, I prefer to use an 18 gauge needle. Then immedi immediately put pressure on the site for three to five minutes so you don't get bruising. Then I chill the area again and then inject subcutaneously just beneath the skin, half to one cc of buffered half percent or one percent lidocaine with epinephrine with the two inch blunt 25 gauge blunt cannula wherever I plan to inject the Bellafil. These cannulas uh, can be found from various vendors. Dermasculpt is one of them. You need to be careful to slip in gently just beneath the skin without rubbing against the skin because this is causes swelling and it can even cause delayed bruising. So usually enter 60 to 90 degrees to the skin and then you quickly turn to whatever angle you need before you go too deep. Then pressure is applied again and wait another 5 to 10 minutes for the skin to turn white so you know that it's unlikely to bruise when you inject as white means the skin no longer has blood in that area. The Bellafil you plan to inject will have been kept in the refrigerator but unfortunately when it's refrigerated it's so thick when it's cold that it's difficult to inject even with a 20 ga 25 gauge cannula. It also may separate the crystals from the collagen if you try to inject it while it's cold. Thus you need to take it out for 15 minutes or more before the procedure or heat it up in your hands for several minutes. Never obviously put it in the microwave. So first, you put the cannula on tight with your fingers. Then I like to use pliers to make it even more snug since if it pops off and you squirt that product on the patient's face, you've lost several hundred dollars. So then you inject the amount you predetermined as enough, preferably for a 50% correction or less, and inject for multiple angles, realizing you're going to be doing it again several months from now. So all the time you try not to be rubbing against the skin with the cannula and you want to stay above the muscle if it's in the lower eyelid area. When you're done, you put pressure for three minutes and then massage with recovery gel. Have the patient gently massage the area twice per day for 20 seconds with the recovery gel. The recovery gel has Arnica, Montana to prevent bruising and vitamin K and growth factors in it. Now, if it's desired, you can have them start on the Regenica creams and serums and Refisa, which is Retin-A, to enhance collagen production from the Bellafil, especially if they're postmenopausal, they as they benefit the most from these growth factors, as their natural ones are depleted when they're postmenopausal. Then have them return in three months or later, whenever they can afford the next coat. The results are great when done properly. Not only does it restore the volume, but it stimulates growth factors release that rejuvenates the overlying skin. Before Bellafil became FDA approved, I was performing facial fat transfers on everyone who wanted long-term results. The biggest difference is, was the upfront cost, the equivalent of two boxes or ten syringes of Bellafil, and the need to inject four tablespoons of fat in order to get one tablespoon of fat to live after three months. Thus, by definition for the first three weeks, everyone was overcorrected and looked too young, sometimes thirty years younger. That faded and they would only look eight years younger in the end, but it was disturbing for the first several weeks. Now with Bellafil, they can have their facial volume restoration one syringe at a time. 
This keeps the upfront cost down to a manageable level for my patients. They never have to look overcorrected or too young.